Well, everybody, what's up? Welcome to Cornerstone Anywhere. So glad that you're tuning in. So glad that you're joining us today. And we know that so many folks are joining us here at Cornerstone Anywhere today as we are online only for all of our services. So if this is your first time joining us, special hello, special welcome to you. We know that you're gonna be blessed by today's service. We're in a series right now called Songs of Christmas. And throughout the month of December, we've just been following along with these, these Christmas classics, if you will. And today, we wrap up our series by looking at the, the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And here in just a little bit, our, our pastor, Chris Vanillin, he's gonna share uh, just from that particular song. And he's got so many cool insights, so many different things to share from that song. And I know you guys are gonna be blessed as we, uh, as we hear a little bit more about that. But just a couple of housekeeping things. Hey, as we worship every week, you know, today we're gonna have a couple songs as a part of our service. It will be a little bit abbreviated, but we're gonna have a couple songs and it'll be opportunity for us to, do, to be able to worship from wherever we're at. The other things that we do every week as a part of our worship is we have a time of, of communion and we'll do that here in just a little bit as well as a part of our service. But one of the other ways that we worship each week is through our giving. And if you're part of Cornerstone, if this is your church, if you're, you know, maybe you call this your church home, then it's an opportunity for you to, to just be able to, to be a part of the mission, to be able to contribute back to what God is doing through our church, both here locally, uh, but also what he's doing abroad and, and how he's touching so many folks through our Cornerstone Anywhere community. And so there's so many different ways that you can give. Uh, some of those things are just gonna be listed on the screen for you. And we just encourage you that as you give, you get to see to it that God just does incredible stuff throughout our region, throughout our community. And so we wanna say just welcome again. We're so glad that you chose to join us for service today. The first Noel, the angel did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields where they lay, in fields where they lay, keeping their sheep on a cold.
Well, welcome, Cornerstone family. It is so good to be coming to each of you in your homes as we are wrapping up this year and celebrating what has been an awesome year. So happy new year to you and your family and your friends. Uh, As we worship together um, from all different places today, we are celebrating all across the Metro East and even across the country. Uh, What a great year it has been. This is a very unique weekend for us given that all of our teams are getting a chance to recharge a little bit. We are able to highlight our Cornerstone Anywhere platform today and gear up for a great week, a great week, a great year of ministry ahead. So Happy New Year. Today we're wrapping up our Christmas series, Songs of Christmas, with the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And this classic Christmas song was written by an American preacher named Philip Brooks. There's a great story about Brooks. As a young preacher during the Civil War, He got really discouraged and kind of defeated. He realized that over time, everyone in his church had either lost a family member or a friend to someone in the war. They'd lost them to the war. And he himself had presided over the funeral of President Lincoln, who had been murdered just that past spring in 1865. And now, to kind of reconnect his faith, reconnect his calling, He traveled to Israel to tour the Holy Land. And on Christmas Eve, Brooks rode on a horse out of Jerusalem just a few miles south to the sleepy little town of Bethlehem. And as he approached the Church of the Nativity, which is built really close to or perhaps even on top of the spot where Jesus was born, he heard Christmas music. He heard voices. They were celebrating the birth of Jesus. And something just kind of came alive inside of Brooks that day and really re-energized his faith. He imagined that night, Christmas Eve, 1865, the town of Bethlehem on that very first Christmas. He could picture it, he could could almost feel it, and he imagined what it must have been like for Joseph and Mary and, and the shepherds and everybody in the Christmas story. God gave him inspiration that night that would later contribute to the song we now have known as, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And he described his experience that night as God giving him a singing in his soul that would carry him the rest of his life and would help him to write one of the greatest Christmas carols of all time. Now you may remember that while Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he was actually not from Bethlehem. He was just in town because he was with his mom, still in her tummy because of the census that was being taken. And in the Christmas story in Luke chapter two, It says this in Luke chapter two, verse four. Luke chapter two, four says, because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home, and he traveled there in the village of Nazareth in Galilee. And he took with him Mary, his fiance, who was now obviously pregnant, or she was now expecting a child. And I've been to Bethlehem a few times. Uh, The last group was from Cornerstone was able to go this past February. And even today, when you go to Bethlehem, it's not really a huge place. Uh, the church that Brooks visited in 1865, the Church of the Nativity, is still there, still very similar, actually, to what it would have been like for him. And it's the oldest site continually used for worship in all of Christianity across the entire world. Bethlehem is a cool town. It's an incredible ancient town, The building itself at the Church of the Nativity has been preserved for generation after generation. Years ago, when they were cleaning up the walls, they realized there is this beautiful gold mosaic that fills the main worship room. Somebody had plastered over it years before, but they've restored it. It is just breathtaking, and the church is pretty incredible, especially when you think about how old it is. Most things don't last as long as that has. But it's not actually the church building that really gets me. It's actually the shepherd's fields nearby where you can just kind of put yourself in that moment. They're still very vacant. There are fields out there. Uh, You can just kind of picture and imagine what it would have been like for the shepherds that day when the angels appeared. Not every place carries this kind of weight or significance, but to me, this one does. And there are so many connections with this little town of Bethlehem and Jesus. And then to what it means to us Today, So I want to bring some of that together, and in just a few moments, we're going to sing that song, The Little Town of Bethlehem, 
and help bring the picture together of what it means for us moving forward. Have you ever seen one of those green road signs when you're driving into a town somewhere, or maybe sometimes there are other colors, but there's a small sign going into a town, usually near the name of the town, that tells you something has happened in that town. They've had you know, some kind of a state championship or that sort of thing, kind of like this sign from Metropolis, Illinois. This is a one of a kind. Welcome to Metropolis, Illinois, home of Superman. Who knew Superman grew up in Illinois, way down in Southern Illinois. If Bethlehem had a sign like that, all right, and they didn't make signs, I don't think, in the first century like that, but if Bethlehem had a sign in Jesus' day, it would have said something like this. It would have said, Bethlehem, home of the shepherd king. Now that's not talking about Jesus, all right? I'm talking about before Jesus was born, it would have said Bethlehem, home of the shepherd king. Because Bethlehem is where King David, the favored king of Israel, that's where he was born. He was born and he was a shepherd, but eventually he got a little bit older and he ended up killing a giant. Anybody know the giant's name? Yeah, the giant's name is Goliath because Ultimately, he becomes the king of Israel. He was a man after God's own heart, scripture says, and the king to whom God gave the promise that one would come after him to reign on his throne forever, that came through the line of David. And they would not have forgotten the history of King David, the shepherd king, being from this sleepy little town of Bethlehem. So despite being a small town, they knew the shepherd king is from here. Now, in Matthew's account of the Christmas story, when he's talking about the current king in the first century, King Herod, it says this in Matthew chapter two, verse seven. It says, then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men. Remember, the wise men are coming to look for a baby Jesus. He calls for a meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. And then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. Now Herod had no intention of actually worshiping Jesus, of course. He ended up trying to kill Jesus. But notice, he didn't say, well, where's Bethlehem? I've never heard of that town before. I, I'm, it's very unfamiliar. It, it was where King David was from. It was a familiar place in Israel's history. But Bethlehem's significance was about to grow significantly more because coming through town at this time were Joseph and Mary, this couple from Nazareth. And while they were in town, Mary gave birth to a baby boy and named him Jesus. And this baby would grow up to become the good shepherd, the one who cares for and watches over all of God's people. In fact, look at what Matthew chapter one, verse 30, beginning in verse 32 says. It says, he will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he will reign over Israel Forever his kingdom will never end. That was the promise about the Messiah, that he would fulfill the prophecies of David's kingdom, now reigning on the throne over the people of God for all eternity in heaven. Bethlehem was known as the home of the shepherd king, and then Jesus became the ultimate shepherd king. But the connection between Jesus and Bethlehem and, and ultimately to us goes even further. It's not surprising that David, a shepherd, would come from Bethlehem because throughout Israel's history, Bethlehem was known for its lambs. It was known for its lambs. In fact, one, uh, many generations before Jesus in the Old Testament, Jacob, Father Jacob, one of the great fathers of Israel, his wife, Rachel, was buried in Bethlehem in Genesis chapter 35, and scripture says that she was buried at a place called Migdal Eder, which means in Hebrew, Tower of the Flock. It's a reference to a place referring to sheep. According to Jewish history, it was at Migdal Eder in Bethlehem that unblemished firstborn male lambs were born wrapped in cloths and brought from there to Jerusalem as Passover sacrifices in the temple in Jerusalem. Literally, sacrificial lambs were prepared for sacrifice in and around Bethlehem. So you could say Bethlehem, for all of its history, is home to God's lambs, the lambs that were gonna be given to God. 
People from Jerusalem would trek down to Bethlehem to find the shepherds, uh, pick out the lamb that was just right, a spotless lamb with no blemishes, no defects, and then they would purchase that, that lamb for the sacrifice on behalf of their family. And it quite likely was that the shepherds in the Christmas story were literally keeping sheep that were primarily used for temple sacrifice. They were preparing them so that they could be sold to be given for temple sacrifice. Then Jesus comes along and he becomes the sacrificial lamb for all of mankind. He ended the need for ceremonial sacrifice and became the sacrifice for all of us. So this town, Bethlehem, that becomes this extraordinary foreshadowing of what was to come through Jesus, the preparation of the sacrificial lamb. And while Bethlehem is home to God's lambs, Jesus becomes the lamb of God, born in Bethlehem, who was prepared and given to be sacrificed for the entire world. And beyond the sacrificial connection, there's a connection relating to the fullness or sustenance. In the Old Testament, the prophet Micah predicted the coming of the Savior from Bethlehem when he said these words in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. He said, but you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, are only a small village among the people of Judah. Yet a ruler of Israel whose origins are in the distant past will come from you on my behalf. That weird word in there that you may not have heard before, maybe you've heard it before, maybe unfamiliar, the word Ephrathah means in Hebrew fruitfulness. It means fruitfulness. It's a designation given to Bethlehem generations before Jesus. It was almost like that was probably its original name or nickname. The, the name Bethlehem came along later. So Micah mentions this name here where he's like, hey, I'm talking about Bethlehem. You know, if you don't know Bethlehem, you know Ephrathah. That's the name to make sure he's really clear about what town he is talking about. This passage is, of course, about ultimately the coming Messiah, Jesus, the one who is distant, who is from the distant past, but will come on our behalf to Bethlehem. Both town names have significance that I think carries all the way to us. Ephrathah means fruitfulness. Bethlehem or Bethlehem means in Hebrew, house of bread. Now Jesus loved bread. He talked about bread. He ate bread a few times in scripture. He's from a town called house of bread. That's the name of his hometown. I'm not sure what their school mascot was in Bethlehem, but in Hebrew, you can't say Bethlehem without talking about bread. That's what it's about. The name says, house of bread. Bread, of course, was a staple in the diet of every person in the first century. There are so many stories related to bread all throughout the Bible. Usually, there are, they are connected to God, providing for his people and reminding them that he is their source of fulfillment, that he is the one that is gonna provide for them. So when you eat bread... I don't know if you've noticed this, but when, after you eat bread, a few hours later, you are hungry again. Even if the bread is very filling in the moment, sometimes bread can be very filling, ultimately you are hungry again. But once again, there's this incredible connection to Jesus. During his earthly ministry, when Jesus is talking about who he is and why he came and what it, was to, what it means to follow him, he said this in John 6, verse 48 and following. He said, yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I will offer so the world may live, is my flesh now, this passage ends up being a very hard teaching. He goes on to talk about what we do with communion, that he is giving his body as the sacrifice. And in John chapter six, a lot of people stopped following Jesus after they heard this sermon. But it is critical to understand who Jesus really is in this passage. Jesus is connecting the entire history of God providing for his people, providing even things like bread, even this bread-like stuff called manna that they had in the wilderness, going all the way through his birthplace, house of bread is the name of the town, to himself, who he refers to as the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. So this man 
from a town called House of Bread gives himself the title, The Bread of Life. And while physical hunger will always be a thing for humans, and for teenagers, it's usually about 30 minutes after they've eaten their other meal, they need more. Spiritual sustenance is completed and always fulfilled in Jesus. When we walk with Jesus, friends, he provides all that we need. And this song, O Little Town of Bethlehem, that's kind of about the town, the house of bread, helps us to remember all of that. That even though it was a small, somewhat insignificant, sleepy town, God did a huge work through it. So why don't we just take just a moment here in the middle and we're gonna sing that song together, all of you at home, and I'm gonna come back in just a few moments and wrap things up. Let's take a few minutes and sing that song together. In Luke chapter 22, we read about the Last Supper where Jesus, he's sharing a meal with his disciples. And as we read in, in verse 17, Jesus, he outlines what communion is. Communion is something that we do each and every week here at Cornerstone. It's, a, it's an opportunity for us to, to pause from everything that's going on and in worship 
to, to put Jesus at the center, to, for the Him to be the focal point. And certainly He is that for the songs that we sing and anytime we open up scripture. But communion, we focus specifically on what we read here in Luke chapter 22, picking up in verse 17. It says, Then He took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He said, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I will not drink wine until the kingdom of God has come. And then in verse 19, he says, he took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And it's in communion every week that we remember Jesus. We remember his sacrifice as we take that that cup of juice, symbolic of his blood that was poured out for each and every one of us when he went to the cross. And we remember his body that was pierced for our transgressions, his body that was beaten for each one of us as we take the piece of bread, symbolic of his body. And so I'm gonna invite you today, from wherever you're watching, from wherever you're tuning in, to to take communion. And you may not have juice and you may not have bread, but you have some liquid that is symbolic of Jesus's blood, some uh, object that is symbolic of his body that was sacrificed for you. And in so doing, you remember Jesus, just as he instructed his disciples to do. We remember Jesus and his sacrifice for each and every one of us. Well, we've been looking at that song, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and specifically at the history of the town of Bethlehem itself to its connection to Jesus and its connection to us. And there are some pretty incredible connections, really. We talked about how Bethlehem means, or Bethlehem could be referred to as the home of the shepherd king where David was born. David's hometown, the home of the shepherd king, the man after God's own heart, but ultimately it became Jesus, the shepherd king who rules over his people as a shepherd guiding us along every step. The story of Bethlehem reminds us of the temptation that each and every one of us has to take the reins in our own lives, to be the little kings and queens of our little domain in our world. And Jesus came not to dominantly lord it over us, but to lovingly guide and direct us like a shepherd. But make no mistake, friends, the shepherd king is the king, and he calls each of us to surrender to him and make him Lord of our lives each and every day. Now we also see how, we talked about how Bethlehem is like home to God's lambs. It's this hub for where lambs were raised to prepare them for sacrifice, and how this same town became the birthplace of Jesus, the Lamb of God. It's a message to us. Jesus comes in right in the middle of our mess. There is no time and no need to try to clean things up when you're preparing for a sacrifice. I mean, just imagine that very first Christmas once again, kind of put yourself back in that moment, giving birth to a baby with animals all around and straw and a manger. They didn't have time to clean things up. Or maybe imagine the sacrifice of the lamb at the temple. While wonderful and meaningful and everything, it was messy and it was dirty. There was no cleanliness in a sense. There was purity. There was no cleanliness to it. Friends, let's be reminded that the Lamb of God has come and he has come right into our mess. And we don't have to try and clean up before Jesus comes into your life. It doesn't really work that way anyway. Instead, invite him in as the gift that he is right into the middle of your mess right now. We're reminded also that this little town of Bethlehem in Hebrew means house of bread. Bethlehem means house of bread. And this house of bread would become the birthplace of Jesus, the bread of life. And that's a reminder that we're gonna be tempted every day to seek our own fulfillment or our own fruitfulness, ifafta, 
or satisfaction in the temporary. And we are quickly going to be perishing all of our possessions and accolades. None of that stuff holds weight long term. We're only to be left hungry again when we pursue those things. And the deepest needs of our souls, things like steadfast love and abiding peace and enduring joy and unshakable hope and real true meaning, man, those things are found in the bread of life in Jesus. He is the fullness and sustenance that we need each day. So as we wrap up our songs of Christmas, I'm reminded of another song. As far as I know, nobody knows the tune of this song because it's recorded at the very end of the Bible in the book of Revelation. And as we get this very small glimpse into heaven, this is what we get in Revelation, a small glimpse into heaven. Notice the themes that we've talked about today coming back around once again in heaven when one day, We will join Jesus forever, no more pain, no more sorrow. All of the sacrifice has been completed and fulfilled. Revelation chapter five, verse four says, then I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and read it. Nobody's worthy, none of us are worthy on our own. Verse five, one of the 24 elders said to me, stop weeping. Look at the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, He has won the victory, and he is worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. And then you jump down to verse 12 where it says, They sang in a mighty chorus, Worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the sea and in the sea, that covers most of them, and they all sang, Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Maybe the biggest reminder when we think of Bethlehem is just simply, man, don't miss Jesus. Don't miss Jesus. He has done great things for us, friends. And as we begin this new year really soon, don't miss him. Don't let the busyness of life or the struggles and the challenges that weigh us down get in the way of putting the Lamb of God on the throne of your life and walking with him each and every day in this new year. God bless. Happy New Year. What's up, everybody? Welcome to A Deeper Dive. My name's Josh. This is Pastor Chris. Familiar faces for Hi, so many of you if you're uh, a regular Cornerstone Anywhere attender. But if you're new to Cornerstone Anywhere, we want to especially welcome you to this segment that we call Deeper Dive, where each week we just take a deeper dive into the topic that was discussed during today's message. And so uh, alongside me, as usual, is Pastor Chris. Yeah, from our little living room, sort of, to yours. It's time for a deeper dive. It's time for a deeper dive. Hey, today, as you were wrapping up, I think that the biggest takeaway for me is that you're talking about, like, as we're thinking about Bethlehem, Mm -hmm. the biggest reminder is that we don't miss him. Right. And as we're going into a new year, especially, is that in this new year that, that we prioritize our faith, that we prioritize Jesus, and that we don't miss him. And Man, one of the really things I think that's really cool is that going into New Year is we've got an, a resource that I'm excited for you to share a little bit yeah. about with our uh, Cornerstone Anywhere folks. Yeah, there's there's so many cool things coming in. Obviously, the, the spiritual focus is what's most important for going into the New Year. There's so many other things that we're going to be doing uh, personally, right? But the spiritual focus is what we really want to focus on. There is a new resource that we're pushing out starting today, all right? It's a resource. Grab your phone if you would. You can click on the QR code, however you do that with your camera thing. Um, if you're watching on a screen, you can use your phone. If you're on your phone, you can uh, go to the URL. We'll be sure to drop the URL, drop the URL. in the link. But check this out. You can subscribe to a Cornerstone-specific Bible plan that we are launching. It's a 30-day plan. It's a good way to just get started in the new year. And I'll just tell you, it's not a Bible study in terms okay. of like verse by verse by verse. It's actually a study of the Bible and learning how the Bible works and how to study the Bible a little bit. 
And I think it's just a great resource if you're new in faith, especially, but if you've been doing this a while and you find yourself a little bit clunky with getting into the word more, this will really help bring it together for Perfect. you. Yeah. I've been working through it, uh, just prequel. I've been working through it. And I think it's just really good stuff from a group called The Bible Project that they have a ton of stuff out there, but this is customized to us and for our church. And we'd love to encourage you to jump on there. It'll give you a prompt every day. You can watch it. It's very, very short. I mean, it just gives you a few moments. And then if you're doing other reading or whatever, that'd be fantastic. You can build that in as well. So just to clarify, this isn't necessarily like a Bible study in the true sense of right. like, hey, we're not like opening up and just studying the book of John, but this is right. more a study of the Bible and how it was constructed. Yeah, and, it's and video so many- driven. It's video driven. It's a inter- like a kind of like interactive a little bit videos about how the Bible works, how yeah. it's put together and what we need to do as a result of that. And I just think it's a great way to launch in to the new year. I think it's an incredible resource as we're thinking about the new year and certainly prioritizing faith and putting Jesus at the forefront. Uh, Man, what a great way for us to do that, not to just to try to do that on our own, because that's one of the things that happens with faith is that is that Satan, you know, today in in the message, there's this picture of these little lambs. And we know the importance of the shepherd and protecting the flock and protecting the lambs. But what Satan sometimes what he tries to do is he tries to isolate us. And when he gets us by ourselves, then, you know, that's 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 where the trouble comes. Exactly. And so this. Bible reading plan is a great way for you to join with other folks and to to be in community as you are uh, just studying through, I guess, looking and and learning more about the Bible and and the impact that it can have for each and every one of us. Yep. Great point. That's awesome. Well, we've got a couple other things that we want to share with you, just specific to things that are going on around here at Cornerstone. So uh, next Sunday, January the 7th, is what we call the State of the Church Sunday. Anything you can tell us about that? Yeah, I think it's going to be, first of all, the first Sunday of the year. So if you're normally with us in person or if you're local enough to be able to be with us in person, this is your call. Okay, we want to make sure you are here next Sunday in person. We're going to have an awesome time talking about where we've been over the last year, some things about where we're headed, uh, just praying up and gearing up for a great year. And it's kind of a special day because we're just doing a fun sort of launch back in the year giveaway. And and I was was just going to say, are we allowed to share? I think we can share that. Why not? If you've been holding out, if you've been maybe watching online, but you're like, you know what? We need to get there. Next Sunday is the day you want to be here because we're giving away free T-shirts. To Everybody's going to get a Cornerstone T-shirt next week. Everyone and maybe in you attendance. don't care because you don't wear T-shirts, and that's fine. You can give yours to a friend. But some of you very much care about T-shirts. And this week coming up, it's just a way for us to kind of launch with excitement in the new year that everybody's going to get a T-shirt, hopefully of their correct size, that will only be available on January 7th in person. Now, if you start putting in the chat, can I get this if I'm there five minutes later a week later a day later no it's only on sunday morning One january 7th that is it that is legitimately it and that's going to be just a way for us to launch back in person and celebrate together yeah. as we go into the new year really looking forward to it i'm excited about it too because i actually i got a sneak peek of, of the design for this shirt and i it's a shirt that i would i you know i'm a little bit picky about the the, the shirt that i will wear or won't wear which and this, nice shirt that you're wearing today thank by you the very way. much yeah. always the best yeah uh, the this time of the year, but this particular shirt, I think, is one that uh, I think a lot of people would like to have I in their agree. wardrobe. I think it's going to be awesome. So you don't miss being here next on the Sunday. 7th. Yeah, next Sunday the seventh. And so uh, there's other information you're going to share even more next Sunday about some of the cool things that happened in 2023, yep. about what's going further uh, in a, uh, forward. forward. <laughs> yes, thank you. Things on the horizon for us. And so be sure that you're here next uh, next uh, Sunday, Sp- especially try to be here in person. But certainly you want to tune in because you're not going to want to miss anything that is shared as we take a, a look at what God has done, but also take a look at what God is, is yet to do. So, And Cornerstone Anywhere family will still be here with a deeper dive and all the normal stuff that you've come to expect. And as you're um, worshiping with us, we look forward to seeing you online as well. Absolutely. You guys have a great week. God bless.